I remember talking to Blair and I was like, how much should I hire a management company? She was like, girl, you local. You can manage this yourself. And then this is a perfect way for you to learn the business about being a land uh, a land owner, right? A landlord, sorry. Landlord. Mm -hmm. Being a landlord, first time investing in homeowner, just getting in there learning it. I made some mistakes. I hired some contractors, they fixed the house up. I got it on the market. It was, I had my first tenant who was still in the property within um, less than a month. Welcome to the Aid to Assets podcast, the ultimate podcast for aspiring real estate investors. I'm your host, Tiffany Watson. Join me as we discuss real estate investing for nine to fivers. We'll talk about everything from money mindsets and property ownership and different strategies you can use to invest in real estate. I want to empower investors, especially those of us who are working full time, who want to navigate the world of real estate, uncover the secrets to building wealth, generate passive income to achieve financial freedom. Equip yourself with resources from experts, practical tips, and step-by-step -step guides on how to kickstart your real estate journey. We'll also hear from nine to fivers who started to build their own portfolios, what they did and how they did it, so you can do it too. Tune in and transform your main job into your biggest silent investor in your real estate investment business. This is your Aid to Assets. Hello, everyone, and welcome to another episode of the Aid to Assets podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Watson, and here I'll get the opportunity to introduce you to nine to fivers who have made the jump into real estate investing and the professionals that have helped them. And so I'm so excited for my guest today so you can hear more about her journey and how she first got started into real estate. So, hey, how you doing today? I'm doing well. Thank you so much for inviting me to your show. Absolutely. So before we get started, why don't you go ahead and introduce yourself, tell the people who you are and what you do. Okay. So I'm Katasha Jaren. I am by... By profession, I'm a psychiatric and family nurse practitioner. I jumped into real estate about three years ago, two or three years ago, and I was able to build a pretty diverse portfolio. So I'm excited to um, share my, the knowledge that I've learned with you guys. Love it. So before we even get into all the good details, I like to start out with receipts so folks know why they need to make sure they hit that like and subscribe button. Y'all know how we do around here. Get those notebooks out so you can take notes. So tell people a little bit about your portfolio and what you've been able to accomplish in three years. All right. Yeah. So just in three years, I've been able to build a seven figure real estate portfolio. It's consists of some multifamily units and single family homes. I kind of started off with the Air, Airbnb arbitrage kind of model. I've jumped into some short-term rental, mid-term, and I have some long-term rentals as well. Love it. So y'all in the chat, go ahead and put seven figures in three years. Seven right. figures in three yes. years. Y'all know a model around here, we believe in no excuses. So before we get into your actual purchase and tell me what started you down this path? Why did you want to invest in real estate? Yeah. So in about like tw 2016, I was trying to think of some ways to grow my money. And I had a friend who kind of got me into investing like stocks and really just trying to pay a closer attention to my finances. And then in 2018, I was like, I really wanted to do real estate. I, I don't know really where the idea came from. I was just like, I kind of want to be a landlord. I want to do something different. Um, I had no prior knowledge, no history, no friends really in the real estate business. So I was just trying to figure out how can I get started. So that's where actually I seen an old colleague of mine's army buddy. He start posting some stuff on Facebook and he was doing some real estate investing and I seen his success and I was like, you know, this is something I'm interested in. How can I get started? So I actually started investing with him in Airbnb arbitrage. This was like in 2020, 2021, you know, COVID. And then he was doing like Airbnb. So people were at home and I was still working, but it was a nice time to jump into real estate because I actually thought it was perfect because it was kind of like the economy itself was slower. And so it was a good time to jump into real estate. Like I could learn a lot. I had more time to really start studying and using all these resources 
So I started investing with a company, an Airbnb arbitrage. I don't know if your guests are aware what that is. So pretty much he would find these homes that were owned by other individuals. I would kind of sublet them or rent them. And then I would um, put them on a short-term, pla- a short-term platform like Airbnb, VRBO, and then rent them out. And I don't know, something was like, Katasha, why don't you just, this was like 2021. And I'm like, I'm making all these people money. These people who own these houses, they're getting all this money. They have a tenant for sure. I need to start doing this myself. And in the way that it was being managed, I didn't really like, I can get more details with that, but I didn't really like how it was going. I was just like, you know what? Let me get into trying to own some real estate. Because at that time in 2021, I only had my first primary residence. The house that I was living in had no other properties. So another army buddy of mine, she started posting on her Facebook. She had just got her real estate license. And I was like, I would love to work with you. She was from where I'm from, Columbus, Georgia. So I was like, can we start trying to find me a property? Like, how does this work? I bought my first property, April, 2021. And then since then, I I recently bought six units duplexes in September of this year. So that brought my real estate portfolio to 13 units total. And so that's how I was able to kind of scale and grow. I just set a goal. I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Before the age of 40, I'm going to own at least 10 single family homes. That was my goal. And so mm-hmm. I was like, in order for me to do this, that means I need to be buying two to three properties a year. How are you going to do this, Katasha? On your full-time job, no support. I don't come from any money. <laughs> I'm working two or three jobs, always have been since 17. I had some money saved up. So I don't know. I kind of just jumped into it. And and that's what I did. Y'all, yeah. Jump first, commit later. Like commit first, figure it out later. Like you will figure it out. But the first step is making the commitment. So let's go back. You mentioned you started with the Airbnb arbitrage. And so we talked a little bit about the show, but thank you so much for going into explanation for those who may not be as familiar. And so you're renting from someone else to then rent to someone else on the short-term platform. So you mentioned you didn't like how they were being managed. Tell us a little bit more about that. That was (laughs) I tell you that was the whole ordeal. But I learned a lot. It it put me in a position now to where I do it on my own. I've learned a lot. I didn't know anything about real estate, nothing about Airbnb. So I learned how this individual was able to structure his business and reach out to other homeowners to try to break their home. I I figured this could be very lucrative if it is managed properly. And so one of the issues that I ran into, you know, not knowing anything, not knowing anything about partnerships, not knowing anything, like trusting everybody, thinking that, you know, they're going to treat your money like you want them to treat it. I did lose a lot of money. I'm just going to be honest. I started losing some money in the process. And then I was like, oh, man, I got to get out of this. Um, how am I going to do this? Because the way that it was being managed. And I learned that. And that's why I manage my own properties now. Because, I mean, I, I don't know. I had lost a lot of money with that situation. Um and it's all because of the way that it's managed. And I didn't particularly like how my guests were being treated. I, I mean, I'm from the healthcare industry. I know how to treat people. I just want everybody to be treated nicely. Everybody, you know, they spend their money with you. It's just want a nice place to stay. Um, there was mm-hmm. some dishonesty in the, in the contract and the way that the business was being run, ran. So luckily, I found out that really early. So I can't say that, you know, I was in this deal for very long with that particular company. Because I had so much going on in 2021, I was going through a divorce. I traveled across the country twi- twice, like moved across the country. Um, wow. I, I just, I was working full time the entire time. Yeah. And I was like, how am I going to do this? Like, I don't, I don't even know. Sometimes I'm just, I look back and I'm like, how were you able to even do this? Like, do you hear mm-hmm. 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 no. But that's why I be telling people, like, you could do it. You can go because right. I did it. Like, it's so possible. It was just, you're going to be tired and it's a lot of work. <laughs> but, right. The, but, the, I mean, the gratification that you got, that you get from afterwards, like, like, man, I was able to do this. I was, now I'm able to tell my story. Like, now I'm able mm-hmm. to encourage people. 
now I've learned so much because I have taken so many losses in a sense, but Mm -hmm. I have taken, like I've gained so many wins from this as well. Like it can be, it's a very great business. And you remember during that time, a lot of people are really talking about generational wealth too. Like 2021, Mm -hmm. and everybody was talking about like, you got to start doing like this and that. So I, when I started researching, I was like, these, you know, millionaires and these people with all this money, they're leaving a legacy for their kids and for their family because of real estate. Like you only, in order to really get to where you're trying to be, if you set your goal, you got to jump into real estate. It is. It's just absolutely. So I was like, well, hey, let me get started. No better time. I love it. Absolutely. So you mentioned, okay, so for those who are familiar, I want you to also hear because one of the things that we really like to emphasize is there are so many ways to get into real estate. So I've shared a little bit on the show about my story. I also started with rental arbitrage. And so I was renting an apartment that was Airbnb friendly. And that's how I started my first Airbnb in Buckhead. And so you mentioned that you found a company that they actually f- sought out homeowners that were willing yeah. to rent out their homes and then let you do Airbnb. And so, y'all, you if you don't even want to do this, you can, if you are willing to connect the people to the opportunity, there is money to be done. Now, as Katasha mentioned, there were some other things, and that's why she decided to spread waves with this company. But if you do good business, there is a business model for you. So tell us a little bit more about that, like, where were you, where were you and where was your Airbnb that you were renting? So I was in North Carolina and my Airbnb, okay. my one, was in Kentucky. <laughs> Louis, <Okay>. Louisville. <laughs> I invested in Louisville, Kentucky. Okay. How seamless. And I will say when it was presented to me, it just seemed like, you know, at that time I was like, this is going to be very passive. This, you know, I'm working a full time mm-hmm. job. I needed something that wasn't going to take up much of my time. And so there were a lot of areas that you can choose from that this company presented to me. And I, I just was like, let me jump into it. Let me, I don't even know why I chose Kentucky now that I think about it. But I, so I ended up going with this company. And within three or four months, I got three properties with them. So they like set it up. Wow. Me. They put it on the platform. He was just like, you're going to start seeing this money coming through your bank account. You don't have to do anything. Mm-hmm. I was like, man, this is too easy. This is a great way for me to jump in because I wasn't really sold at that time. This was, you know, back in January 2021. I wasn't sold on buying a property just yet. Like, I didn't know anything about real estate. I didn't necessarily. It was a very low barrier, like entrance barrier in terms of mm-hmm. money that you, like, if you don't have a lot of money and you want to get started, this is a way to get started. I, I actually, even though it didn't go well for me, I do recommend it for a lot of people because people who can't own homes, this is a great way to jump into um, real estate. But yeah, so first, first property, I'm in North Carolina. First property was in Alabama. Second property was in, no, first property was in Kentucky, excuse me. Second property was in Alabama. And then the third property was in Texas. So nothing. Okay, nothing. so you were split, spread all over the place. I was. I was. <laughs> okay, and so did they have people that were there on the ground and those are the people that were managing the house for you? Is that how that worked? Yes. So the company did have like co-hosts in the area that would manage the property. They pretty much gave you, they used this like software where you can kind of see the uh, check-in information that was sent to guests and you would see payout. But the the company itself, like I was paying a management fee to the company to manage the property. Got it. Okay. Okay. And then so from there, now you're kind of comfortable. You got three units. You see how this is working and you're like, I know hospitality. I mean, the healthcare system. I know how to take care of people. I want to do this myself. What was your next step from there? Yep. So my next step was connecting with that real estate agent that I spoke about earlier, Blair. Mm -hmm. uh, And I will always say her name because I always give her a shout out because she was like, she's also very influential to my journey only because we're from the same area. And I don't know what it is, but we got this connection. I was like, this is what I'm trying to do. And I'm always real with people like, how can I get to this goal? Because this ain't my area. So Mm -hmm. me from A to B, I'm good. And then how can I do that in the best like way possible, the fastest way possible? How is this going to work? Be honest with me. 
And so I decided to just kind of jump in. I bought my first property in April of 2021. And and then I was like, and so during that time, I was still doing the Airbnb arbitrage, but I was also learning that this is not being managed properly. So I was mm-hmm. like, so I remember talking to Blair and I was like, how am I, should I hire a management company? She was like, girl, you local. You can manage this yourself. And then this is a perfect way for you to learn a business about being a land uh-uh. a, a land owner, right? A landlord. Sorry. Landlord. Mm-hmm. Being a landlord, first time investment homeowner, just getting in there learning it. I made some mistakes. I hired some contractors. They fixed the house up. I got it on the market. It was, I had my first um, tenant who was still in the property within um, less than a month. I want to say nine I never, years. I never paid the mortgage on that home because that's how fast everything kind of was. And I, I will say, like, I, I've learned a lot. I'm, I'm very, very grateful. I love that. So first things first, shout out to Blair. Y'all, we talked heavily about needing a successful team. You need a team of people around you that are going to support you. You do not do this alone. And so Katasha talked about her real estate agent, being honest about her goals and what it was she was trying to do. And being able to have that authentic conversation was a key to setting her up for success. So Blair found you this property. Did you know, like, how did you determine what property, what type of property you wanted, what type of investing you wanted to do, all that fun stuff? So, so again, during this time, I'm going through divorce. <laughs> okay. Going and I'm like, I didn't want to jump into something that needed, that I, would, I was going to have to put a lot of money in. Like, so mm. I just told her, this is what I'm looking for. If you can find me something that is almost turnkey, ready to be put on the market in a great area, like, I'm good to go. So we were looking, and I found this property. I actually found the property. I sent it to her. I said, what do you think? And she was like, you know what? I think this is a good, you know, first investment property. I was like, like, cool. Like, how does it work? How do you even put in an offer? Like, mm-hmm. what do you do? How does this work? What do I need to do? I don't, I don't know. So she kind of just walked me through the process. And then from there, my offer was accepted and, and, and then I bought it. Amazing. Amazing. So let's shift gears for a little bit and talk about mindset because one of the things that you mentioned were, so you had these three Airbnb units that weren't going how you initially planned. And yet you still decided, I'm not just going to quit real estate. I'm just going to pivot. What was it that made you want to double down, even when what you initially started wasn't working out the way you wanted it to? Right. Probably because I was kind of thinking, like, I'm not going to be sitting up here making these people money. Like, I'm I'm renting these um, homes on this property. I have a tenant in there. They're taking care of the house. I'm keeping it up. I'm a great, like, tenant. Like, I keep up people's property. But mm-hmm. you make them all this money. So let me get my own house. I can do it for myself. Let me get my own property. And, and then I can short term rate. I can do whatever I want to do with my property because it's mine. Whether I want to you say it to somebody else and maybe they want to do a short term rental in it. If I want to put a tenant in it and do long term, I can do whatever I want because it's my property. I had more when it when you own the property, when you were the homeowner, you had to me mm-hmm. you had more. I don't know, like options. Yeah, you have mm-hmm. more options to do with the property. These people could have kicked me Absolutely. out. Absolutely. Well, they could have shut down my business at any time because they owned the property. Even though we had an agreement, they could have came back and said, you know what? I no longer want to rent my home out to you so you can short-term rent it. Mm-hmm. Like, they could have. They could have shut down my whole operation. And that could have... The During that time, also, you got to remember, during that time, people were... The laws were changing, like the local mm-hmm. laws were changing and people's um, Airbnbs because of like the new tax laws and, and all that stuff, stuff was changing and people's places were getting shut down. I didn't like the instability mm-hmm. of that, the possibility of it. So honestly, the, what was it? The second property I bought, I, I seen how lucrative one of my Airbnbs was. You know what I went and did? I, bought, I went and bought a home in that same area. No. Yo, know, I went and bought a home in the same area. And I was like, I see how well this particular property is doing. Let me go buy a house there. And that's what I did. <laughs> I love <laughs> it. Because now you understand the market. You see the proof of concept. Right. I'm like, never would I have guessed. I was like, this well, this is where I should be. Like, yeah. 
So my second property. And that's the one in Alabama, right? That's the one in Alabama. What part of Alabama? It's in Enterprise, which is like Mobile area. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So so it was perfect because it's like two hours from my hometown, Columbus, Georgia. So even if I go home, I can always drive down there and check on my property. Um, Mm -hmm. It's easy to connect. I had ties to Alabama anyway because that's where most some of my family live. So Mm -hmm. it was perfect. Like I was like, let me just get a property in Alabama. I love it. Alabama has more property taxes too. It's on my list of places to definitely keep watch on. So I like it. Okay. Now you also mentioned while all this was happening, you were going through a divorce. And one of the things that we, I like to be real with people about is life is going to keep lifing. Even when you are deciding that you want to start this new business and take on these new endeavors. So talk to us a little bit about that. How did you keep the energy, the determination to keep going when life was life Life was really life during that time. And it was rough. It was rough. That's why I say sometimes mm-hmm. you know how I got through it because, man, I look, I'll think back and I'm like, how? How? I kept myself so busy and I just kept my eye on the prize. Like, you know what? You set this goal. Yeah. You got to keep going. At this point, you got to keep moving forward. So I was definitely going through the wars. I had just got mobilized with the Army to Fort Bliss. So I traveled from North Carolina, drove from North Carolina to El Paso, Texas in the midst of like my mobilization. So uh, this whole time in the midst of my mobilization, I was, I was buying a property. I actually closed on that, but that property while I was doing my mobilization had to come back to North Carolina after being out there for just less than a month, came Mm -hmm. back to North Carolina Still going through a divorce, going through a, a, a custody battle. I'm in the middle of trying to separate myself from this company where I had the three properties. So sever, so kind of sever those ties and tie up those loose ends so I can continue to move forward. And and sometimes I, I don't know, like, I don't think that there's, I was, I think I was also, I was finishing up from school. I was, I was in a postgraduate program. I don't know how I was able to move forward. A lot of times I think that I always have to remind myself why I'm doing what I'm doing. Like, Tasha, why are you doing this? Keep it, you know, so my goal was, you know, you're trying to create something for your kids. You're trying to leave a legacy for them. Um, Mm -hmm. You're trying to... um, I was trying to move into my own purpose and figure out, you know, exactly what I want to do. And so I think that that is what kind of kept me going because it was challenging. It was very, very mm-hmm. challenging. I really wanted to give up. I really wanted to end with the real estate and take a break. There were so many times I wanted to take a break from everything and put stuff on autopilot. And I just, but I just kept going. Absolutely. I love that. It's so important for us to just keep going. And one of the things that you mentioned that I want to highlight is having a clear why and reminding ourselves regularly about what it is that we're doing and why we are doing it. One of my mentors says that why power will always be greater than willpower. And so when you don't feel like it, but you remember why you are pushing forward, that is what can help you to keep going. Yeah. Now you mentioned that you had a separate side with the first company. So was that just kind of like deciding that you wanted to end the contract or did you have to get like legal involved or how did that work? Yeah. (laughs) Look, when I, I tell people now, you got to watch these companies out here. And mm-hmm. I'm just going to be real with you because, but I tell people all the time, this is just something that, that you're going to hear me say a lot. These people on social media will tell you they're making all this money. What I realized was, yeah, you're making money, but you're making money off of me. And I'm okay with what you're doing because it's a business, but I can't be over here losing money. You making money. Mm-hmm. And, mm-hmm. and you think everything is still like cool. So yeah, I had to, you know, loophole in the contract. You know, mind you, I knew the person I was doing business with. I thought mm-hmm. that they had a great sense of integrity. This is also what taught me, like, even though you think you know somebody, you may really not know anybody. Because mm-hmm. this individual that I did business with, I recommended him to people. I he was very well known. I vetted him. I mean, we were we're both in the military. Mm-hmm. We're both, you know, I was like, surely. He ain't going to do me wrong, right? You know, but it did not work out like that. I will say that he did, in fact, um, make a lot of money in the process of that. It's not just me. And and that's what I want to talk about 
it was several investors that lost a lot of money because mm-hmm. of the way that, that he, he managed the his the properties mm-hmm. his, and the way that he um his business. It wasn't exactly what it was made out to be. So you got you guys mm-hmm. gotta be out here in these streets because people out here will tell you that they're making all this money, buy all these courses, do all these things. You don't gotta do all that. Like yep. you don't have to. And and vet everybody because and make sure everything is a hundred percent like Mm-hmm. He wasn't making the money that he was saying. The units weren't making the money that he said we were going to make. And that was one of the problems. And I was jumping into stuff too fast. Like, looking back, I'm like, Atasha, what were you thinking? Like, you sat up here. I, within three months, I had three properties. I should have definitely spaced it out some. And I should have seen okay. how my first property went. And then, mm-hmm. you know, I seen, them, I seen the money coming in. And I'm like, oh, this is doing good. Let me get another one real quick. And mm-hmm. then... So that one even kind of got up and running. I was like, let me get another one. I'm looking back, I should have taken my time. And it didn't take me long to realize, like, hold on, something ain't adding up. The math right. ain't this last month in particular. Why am I losing all this money? Why is what you told me is not, if what's supposed to happen, it's not happening. So it didn't take me too long, but it's long enough for me to, you know. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> You know, I get all you get at. So thankfully, there was no lawyers involved. I just, we we came to an agreement. We ended that contract. I did want to get my money back. It did take some some demand letters to go out in terms of trying to get some of my money back. I did lose some money. I'll be honest. I didn't get all the money that I wanted back from that situation. But mm-hmm. I was that I learned. Looking, I was like, if that had never happened to me, I wouldn't have known about how to operate my own short-term rental business. Yeah. Yeah. And that's huge. Now, the properties that you bought yourself, are those all short-term rentals? Do you have a combination? What's the makeup of that? Hey, y'all. Tiffany here. Are you looking to purchase or sell real estate? As you know, I'm your aid to assets and I want to help you with all of your real estate endeavors. Whether you're local here like me in the Fayetteville, North Carolina area, I can then help you purchase or sell your next property. If you're looking to purchase or sell outside of North Carolina, let me know too. I can still help you. I have a team of agents all over the country that I can connect you with to partner on your next deal. Let's get to the closing table, y'all. We buy our way to wealth, whether that's buying right or selling better. Can't wait to hear from you. Click on the link in the bio if you want more information on how to personally work with me or an agent on my team. Talk to you soon. Yeah, they're a combination. Like I have three short-term rentals, three, I want to say three, let me see, one, two, three long, four long-term rentals, one, two, three long-term rentals, three short-term rentals. I'm starting to pivot my business a little bit in the short-term rentals. I also, I also like to market them for midterm as midterm rentals as well. I really found that I love that market. It's less turnover. Short-term rentals, you may get a little bit more money, but I like a little bit more of consistencies with my tenant and them staying a lot longer yep. rather than us coming in. They stay like a couple of days, week maybe. And then you have your midterm rentals. They'll, they're staying like, 30 days to 90 days. And I'm like that. Um, it's similar to a tenant, but it's not in terms of like, it's usually, you know, up to 90 days. So a lot of traveling professionals mm-hmm. will, will rent your home. And I love offering my home. I'm, I mean, I'm a nurse practitioner. I love offering my home to nurses. I love offering my home to other healthcare professionals and just professionals in general, because they tend to take care of their home also a lot better. Right. And that's huge because one of the things when we talk about deciding what investment strategy we want to choose for our business, I really like to highlight with people, there is a lot that goes into each one. And so figuring out what works for you. So one of the things that you mentioned is like, you like having a more stable tenant. People need to know that about themselves. Are you okay with the turnover? Because that means that you have to clean the house and get the house ready for the next guest. And so when you short-term rental 100%, there's a possibility for more money because you have more guests, you can charge at a higher rate, but there's more work. And I think that's something that is getting lost with people when it's like, oh, I'm gonna just start an Airbnb. 
okay, but do you understand what that entails? So I'm glad that you mentioned the differences in that. So people, as they're trying to decide what their investment strategy is, they take that into consideration. Yeah. So because the thing about it is, especially like for me, my short-term rental that was local to my area, I was cleaning it myself. Like in between jobs. You were not. I was the cleaner, girl. I was the cleaner, the manager, the everything. I was doing everything to save every little bit of money that I could. I did <laughs> just hire somebody because I was like, this is too much. Like, I can't do everything. Because um, uh-huh. when you thinking about trying to scale your business, you, you're going to have to start hiring people and really trusting yeah. people. But back then, I had trust issues. I was like, ain't nobody going to take care of my property more, like, better than I am. I'm a clean man. Mm-hmm. Going to, if I have to meet the guests, which I, I really don't prefer to do, but mm-hmm. I will. I set up my short, I, I set up my short term, my first short term rental home. I set all that up. I painted the door. I never knew. That was the first time I put furniture together in my life. I never knew how to put furniture together. Like, I was oh, in there, putting the furniture together painted the, t- the door man but it was a process it was a process back then i love it i love it because listen entrepreneurship is gonna stretch you you are going to do things you are gonna learn things about yourself and so yes because i remember the first time i had to set up my unit i was like tiffany you don't hang up nothing what are you doing so <laughs> 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 no. we look we get creative like <laughs> I, I didn't even know I had a creative volume. I, I decorated that house so nice. I would have stayed there. I was like, this furniture yes. is best furniture I got in my own house. Like, they got a whole thing, color coordinated, and everything. Yes, yes. So proud of myself. I was so proud of myself. I'm so proud of you. And really. It's the stuff that you do when you're going to make some money off of it. You get real interested, real creative. And it's like, my house is never. And the, the amount of time it takes me to decorate my own house. My first Airbnb unit, I put completely ready in two weeks. I'm talking from start to finish, two weeks. And I was like, meanwhile, when I move in from my house, it's two months and I might still have boxes later. Right. <laughs> Forever. I think I stayed in my, I was staying in my house. My Back then, my mother was like, my mother-in-law was like, you're not going to decorate. And I was like, no, it's okay. I'm like, whatever. I was, I was de- we had definitely been living in this house for at least three years. And I had just started putting pillows on the couch. Like, <laughs> You didn't, I didn't have no curtains on the window. Like, I was just like, whatever. And this house, yeah. I'm like, good. Like, like, what was I thinking? I don't know. Oh, I love it. I love it. Okay. So talk to us about scaling now. Because you mentioned that when you first started, Katasha was doing everything. So the cleaner, the manager, even meeting guests, all of that. So you're still working full time. What was it that get, got you over that hump? And allowed yourself to hire people to help you. Because for many people, this is also going to be their first time hiring people as they start to build their team. Yeah, absolutely. And building a team is so important when you when it comes to scaling your business. During that time, like, I was trying to figure out a way of how am I going to build this team? I can't do it all alone. There's no way you can scale a business and do it all by yourself. There's just not enough time, you know, time in the world because... The the energy that I'm putting in to clean it, those couple hours, I could be actually out here figuring out another way to to scale my business, whether it's looking for another property, yep. feel, um, figuring out how am I going to fund this business, um, figuring out like tenants, what systems am I going to put into place? Yeah. So I definitely got to a point where I was like, it's time, um, still working full time. I need to hire somebody. So I went through a couple of cleaners. Honestly, until I found an amazing person who I absolutely love. I'd be so afraid to tell people her name. She's amazing. I don't want her to tell nobody her name because it because when it comes to Airbnb, cleaners will make and break your business. Like if you don't have a good set, then you might go out of business. Cause people, you know, they walk in and be like, oh, this house it smells, it smells good. It's nice and clean. Mm-hmm. Like you but you know, and you gotta get somebody you really, really trust. So during that time, I was definitely trying to find people who could who were consistent. And I say now, and I'm always looking for other people to network ner- network with and people where they can join my team and they have the same goals as I have. Um, they understand what I'm trying to do. So found a really great cleaner. When I tell you building that team is so important, I still work with some of the same people. And I'm so 
honest with them about where I am in my journey, what I'm trying to do, that if you don't understand my goals and you're going to help me get there, then please move along and, and you can go your way. I can go my way. But let me, you know, let me interview or talk to the next candidate because I need to really be trying to work with people who understand my goals. So when you when you start going out there buying properties, that lender is so important. So I mm. started working with certain lenders who understood. I don't even know how I'm going to be able to afford this property. What paperwork do I need? You yeah. know, I'm working full time, and people know when it comes to those closing documents, you got all this paperwork. Who is going to make this as seamless as possible? Because when I tell you, I don't have time. I don't have time. So I started mm-hmm. building a team and working with people who understood, like, she ain't going to do all that. Like, let me go ahead and help her fill this out. Let me go ahead and just, make, you know, send it to her and say, look, sign here. And then explain it to me. What exactly am I signing? Because I'm going to read it, though. But, you know, what exactly am I doing? Why is this going to help me in the long mm-hmm. run? I started finding those people who understood my goals. And I started just working with those same people. I worked with the same lender two or three times just because. They'd be like, so I'm going to see you next year, right? And I'm like, yo, you're going to see me next year. like. <laughs> and I was like, I called the other cleaner. I just bought six units in Columbus, Georgia. And I was like, you ready? I was like, because I trust certain people. I know that they do a great job. Yeah. I like working with the same people. And and you do a great job. And I'm going to try to give you as much business as I can because, you know, we're we're all out here just trying to, to do the best we can. And so I've been yeah. really, really blessed with people that I've worked with so far. That is so, so good. There's so many things that you said that I want to highlight. One, if y'all have the gift of cleaning, consider starting an Airbnb cleaning business because we are always in need of cleaners. It doesn't matter where you live. There is an Airbnb there and somebody is looking for a cleaner. If that just, you know how there are some people where they just feel better when they didn't clean something for somebody. If that is you, call me because I'm sure we can figure something out. So that's the first thing because if you are thinking about short-term rentals as your investment strategy, your cleaner will 100% make or break your business. I'm trying to think if there is a more critical role for a short-term rental owner and I I don't think so. I think the cleaner might be the one. Mm -hmm. They definitely... Yeah, so... Me... Yeah, so shout out, shout out to shout out to my cleaners. I'm with you. I'm like, no, I don't want to. I don't want to say false name either because then they get too much business. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> but, I, I feel you. It takes it takes a little minute to really get with it, find a cleaner that you really really like. Like, and when you like them, like like I be hesitant to tell people who my cleaners yes. are. Yes, you're too busy, and then just you know, all of a sudden I don't know no cleaner. I'm like, uh-huh. I don't want you to get too busy. And then also, I don't want you to treat my cleaner bad because what you're not going to do is make her mad. And so exactly. she don't want to do this no more. <laughs> exactly. I need you. I need you. And I ain't going to lie. Like, girl, I need you. I love my cleaners. When I tell you, I got three awesome cleaner companies. Like, these women are amazing. Like, they're mm-hmm. amazing. They are absolutely amazing. I love that. But like, I don't even and know. And so but- then something else that you said too that I want to, I don't want people to miss though, is you mentioned that you are very clear and willing to share with people that, who, what your goals are. So that way you all can determine if y'all are on the same page. Talk mm-hmm. just a little bit more about that because sometimes you hear people who mention they are actually nervous about sharing their goals with other people. And so talk just a little bit about that mindset and that process that you, for you. Yeah, I mean, I just, I had no choice, but to be honest, you know, I was like, I don't know. This is not my, this is not my field. I don't know anything about real estate and lending and lending products and loan products that I qualify for and, you know, certain, certain things. So I want the expert, if you're the, if you're the expert in this field, please educate me. Cause one thing about me, I'm willing to listen and I, I'm going to trust what you say in your guidance. So I'm, I was really big on finding somebody, finding people on my team that I could really trust. But I was honest with them. This is what I'm trying to do. I need to be able to buy a property because, mind you, I, I set that goal of I need to be able to buy a property, at least two properties a year in order to hit. So my, my initial goal was just to have 10 single family units before the age of 40. When I started, I was like two years ago, I was 34. So I was like, this is just, this is definitely possible. So I was honest with my, my real estate agent, my lender or the, the loan officer. 
this is what I'm trying to do. Don't don't let me put myself in a position where, and this is this is also another thing that I I knew. I kept I knew this is the I started looking, I only looked at houses where I calculated that mortgage. And if I cannot afford that mortgage, if if I didn't have a tenant in it, and um if something were to happen, I was gonna be able to pay that mortgage based off my one little income. Cause mind you, I was just mm-hmm. like, I'm gonna be able to afford this. This is another thing people need to consider. I mean, you can go out there and you can be looking at four hundred, five hundred thousand dollar homes, but just mind you, you don't have anybody in there renting that property from you. Are you going to be able to afford that mortgage? So I knew how much I was going to be able to afford. I was not budging on going over a certain amount of money because I was too scared. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm like, Mm-mm. no government not about to come for me. I don't want this house to get foreclosed if something were to happen. So I had a, I had a. I had a number in mind and I stayed at or below that number and all of my homes mm-hmm. were at or below that number because I knew that if anything were to happen, I could afford the mortgage. That's not going to be a problem. Mm-hmm. So yeah, building that team, finding people that, tr- that you like trust is, is just really important. Yeah. I hope I answer your question. <laughs> yeah, you did. And I love your honesty. You hear that as a theme throughout when you're talking about your journey. And I want people to really zone into that because y'all, this is a very personal journey, first of all. Becoming a real estate investor is very personal. And one of the things that I talk with people a lot, my clients, but then also people that I just mentor and coach through the process is that you have to be willing to ask yourself a lot of conversations and be radically honest because there isn't a universal, this is the way that you invest in real estate. This is not a one size fits all approach. Mm -hmm. And so you have to be willing to be so honest about where you are, what you're willing to do, how long you're willing to put the effort in. There are some things that I'm willing to do that others aren't, that other people have that I don't. And so our investment strategies are not going to be the same. And so I really love hearing the honest conversation that you not only have with others, but with yourself. Girl, this is our limit, period. It don't matter if you really, really like this house. This is the budget. Stay within the budget. And that's peace of mind you can hear because you, you're confident of like, if anything goes wrong, I know that I'm still good and this is going to be a good decision for me. And I imagine that piece, is, this is part of why we're doing this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. I, I, tell my, I would tell my agents, I don't even want to look at a house that's over my budget. Don't even show me. <laughs> houses all day. Like, that's a hobby of mine. I'd be, pull, I'd be pulling up Zillow or something and looking at houses that way out of my budget. That I know I'm looking to, but I enjoy looking at houses. I can look at houses on earth. Like, I don't know. Like, yes. so I was like, don't even show me. I can't. Don't even show me. That's good. That's good. Okay. And then one other thing you mentioned too earlier that I want to circle back to is that I don't think a lot of people know. When you purchase a home, you don't have a immediate mortgage payment right after you close. And mm-hmm. so that grace period gives you time. If you know this is going to be a house that you're going to put a tenant in, Gives you time. So you mentioned that you've never actually paid the mortgage yourself. I believe it was the home in Alabama. Is that right? I never paid a mortgage on any of my homes, though. Like, <laughs> when I tell you I was so on it, I was like, oh, got to get a tenant in there. Bought a property earlier this year. And, you know, I, I, I've i never paid a mortgage. Like, I'm trying to think. I don't think I have. <laughs> Y'all, um, it's possible. It's definitely possible. It is possible. I love it. Okay. Now, so we were buying single family homes, and initially that was the goal to have 10 single family homes by 40. But then you just snuck up in here with this six unit. Talk to us about that. Where did that transition come from? How did we find the deal? Give us all the tea. I wish it was just like some magic. Girl. Because I was I was talking with a friend and she was like, you need to start getting into multifamily homes. Had I known what I know back then when I started or even a long time ago, and I tell people that VA loan, that loan, that VA loan is something else. If I was young and had I known what I really would have done was bought my first first home using my VA loan and bought my first home being a like multifamily home. And hey, wait, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Say that again, because they missed it. They missed it. Tell them yes. again. 
have the opportunity and you have that VA loan, I would be a multifamily. I, hands down would buy a multifamily using my VA loan. Stay in one part of it and rent out the rest of it. It is definitely possible. You can absolutely do it. So I was telling her, man, I wish I, I wish I had known that years ago because I used my VA loan in my first home, my first primary residence. And mm-hmm. and then had I had I known, that's what I would have done. So she was like, we can look at some. So I was like, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, I'm going to stop at the single family homes. If you ever come across anything like a multi, I really want to get into multifamily homes. If you ever see anything, please let me know. So back to my mentor, I called her and I was like, have you been seeing anything? I wasn't necessarily in the market though. This was just like, this was this year. I had bought a home earlier this year. I I, I called her up. I don't even know how we got on a conversation. Like she was like, oh, I forgot. She closed on... She had these units, like she actually had, what was it, like 22 units available. And she was like, I didn't even think, she was like, Katasha, I didn't even think I was going to get all these units. Is this something you might be interested in? I'm like, are you kidding me? Like, hell yeah, I'm interested. Like, what when, What other time you know, like somebody's going to present you with an opportunity to, because it's so hard to come by. The multifamily homes are so hard to come by. And then what mm-hmm. made it so perfect for my situation was it was in my hometown I've always wanted to get I had always had a house in my hometown we were both from like I said Columbus Georgia we both had an opportunity to she put me in a position to be able to get in on this deal that I don't think that without her I would have been able to get in on so when it came she she presented me with this opportunity I didn't know how I was going to do it I started talking to some other, this is the first time I did another partnership because I was very leery of other people. I presented it to mm-hmm. another family member. I was like, do you want to do it? She said, yes, we bought six units just in September. And, and so that's what I've been working on now. That's my latest deal. I'm getting that up and running. It's going to be on the market very soon. I'm very excited to be able to bring that to some great homes to Columbus. Wow. I love, love that. And so many things, because one, you talked earlier about how you had been leery, but you wanted to do all the things yourself. So to go from that moment to now partnering and purchasing a property with someone else to just see the growth as you have gone along this journey is amazing. But also shout out to mentors that just like put us in rooms, put us in positions to be and in a position to receive opportunities that we weren't even on our radar. We weren't even thinking about this. And then how you are closing on a six unit. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so proud of, of this latest deal. And this is why I started my, so after I closed on this deal, I was like, I'm going to start my consulting thing. I'm going to start putting out information for other black women and but other people, because honestly, and I want to especially shout out Black women because that's who I mostly work with. I know that there's like this myth that, you know, we we don't work together. We don't get along. Well, most of my team are Black women. Like, the person that put me on is a Black woman. My partner is a Black woman. Like, it is what it is. We work well together. I don't know where these women at that hate and do all this stuff. I thank God for my mentors. Like, you tell people what you want to do. This is my goal. This is where I'm trying to be at. You find somebody that's already doing it and you stick with them. Like, and then just be, and just be honest and have good integrity and do the work. Like nobody going to partner with you. And if you ain't going to do the work now, like if you're not going to be able to do your part and show how you, what you're going to bring to the table, you going to partner with you. Right. 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 And, and so I had to learn also because of the other deal that I was in. I honestly had told myself, I'm never partnering with anybody else. Like, I'm not, I'm not doing it because nobody's going to work as hard as I am. Like, at that time, my mind frame was so, like, I don't trust anybody. <laughs> this, is what I'm, mm-hmm. this, is my, this is my legacy. This is what I'm trying to do for my kids. This is what I'm trying to do for myself. I know how good of a person I am. And because of that one situation, I had forgot how it was so, but it's so many other great people out here. And it's okay to partner yeah. with other people, you know? So right now I'm on this mission where I've had so much great success. I've had some failures and some losses, but I've had great success and I've made some mm-hmm. money and I'm willing to share that with everybody. Like it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It doesn't bother me at all. Like I'm happy to share. 
Yeah, yeah. One of the things that makes me think of is this quote that says, so often we remember the things that we should forget and forget the things that we need to remember. It's so easy to get caught up on that one person or that one deal and negate all of the other people and the other deals that have worked well. So I am so grateful that you are willing to share both because we want to set people up for the real. We want to let them know potentially what they are going to be walking into if they decide to do this and let them know there is so much on the other side if they just commit to doing the work. This is possible. Yes. yes. I tell, I tell, I saw, I've done a couple of coaching calls and I'm like, I'm willing to give you the information and no charge. Like I didn't charge these individuals, but because at the end of the day, only you can do the work. You are only as mm-hmm. successful as the work that you're going to put into it. I mean, I can give you all yeah. the gems and I would love to give them to you because I can tell you what I did wrong. And if you can learn something from me, then, you know, so be it. But yeah, so getting into real estate has by far, because it opens your eyes. It's like now, man, I could be doing so many other things. My my latest, my latest thing is, and I put it out there and I manifest. And that's something my mentor had taught me about manifestation. She was like, just say it, just put it out there. What you trying to do? And every time I say, this is what I'm trying to do. I'm going to get this 10 houses before the age of 40. I'm Period. Just, I'm going to get these 10 houses before... The way that the track that I'm on, I'm going to get these tier houses way before age of 40. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm almost there. I'm almost there. So I start manifesting things. I start putting things out there. So my latest thing is I want to do a group home. I really love elderly people. I really love the veteran community. I have houses mm-hmm. available. I really would love to be able to put a, a place on the market for for those particular vulnerable populations to to house them. I'm a great landlord. Mm. All my tenants tell me I'm great. And I, I appreciate them. I love them. <laughs> Loving it. We need good landlords, especially. Mm-hmm. So that is so good. Okay. So before we wrap up, you mentioned the consulting and coaching that you're doing. Tell people a little bit more about this opportunity if they want to reach out and get in touch with you. Yes. Um. So right now I have a link on my Facebook page where you can schedule a com- consulting call. My Facebook is Katasha Lene. And so if you're interested, if you want to learn, learn more about short-term rental, how to get started, mid-term rentals, long-term even, and if I have the knowledge, I'm more than happy to sit down and discuss with you and, and see how I can help you in your journey. So there's a link in my Love bio. It. I have a link on my Instagram, which is Ms. Katasha. So you can click on that link and then it'll take you and you can schedule a consulting call. Perfect. And y'all, both of those, Katasha's Facebook and her Instagram, as well as that link will be available in the description box. So y'all be sure to follow and tap in with her, especially if you're interested in learning more about short-term rentals. She can be such a great asset for you. So last thing, and you started this already, but I want to just make sure I give you the opportunity. So we also here at Aid to Assets, we believe in vision casting. We're going to manifest the things that we put our mind to. And so I'd love to ask a year from now, three years from now, your choice, what is going to be true about you and your business? Oh, this is a great question. Years from now, I think the biggest thing probably is, is, is group homes. I want to group home in, in other states. Like I want one locally in, in North Carolina. I would love to have a group home here. I would love to have a group home in Georgia. And I would love to grow that and and see where it goes. Because I feel like it's perfect. It almost ties into, it's my real estate and it's my healthcare. So I feel like mm-hmm. there's just so, so when I think about it, to me, it almost seems like this is the thing about manifestation. It's like, oh man, can you do it? Like, is it possible? And it, but I'm like, girl, yeah, it's absolutely possible. Y'all gonna see me in a couple of years from now. And I'm gonna sound like three group homes operating and yeah. running. I'm telling you, it's it's like, well, I can't wait. Like, <laughs> so that is I my love it. group poems. We gonna say, period. Three years, three group poems. It's as good as done. Uh-huh. Oh my goodness, Katasha, this has been amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the show, for sharing so- your journey with us. I have really enjoyed getting to hear more about your experiences. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. You are so welcome. Well, y'all, this has been another incredible episode of the Aid to Assets podcast. We are helping you get closer to your real estate goals. Until next time, take care. Bye. 
Thank you for tuning in to another insightful episode of Aid to Asset. Remember, your journey from nine to fiver to successful real estate investor is within reach. Keep learning, keep growing, and keep investing in your future. If you'd like to know more, connect with me on Instagram at Aid to Asset. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, and leave a review. Until next time, happy investing.